Hi, everybody. This is Mindy Egan, and welcome back. I'm excited to be a part of the Honeybee Stamps Modern Spring YouTube video hop filled with tons of inspiration. I will have a link down below in my video description to the next person in the hop. Be sure to leave comments along the way to be entered into winning one of two $25 gift cards to the Honeybee Stamps store. My card project for today is going to be featuring the Lovely Layers Tulip die set. I am absolutely loving these Lovely Layer sets from Honeybee Stamps, and I will be doing lots of ink blending today. We are going to jump right into it, and I went ahead and die cut out the Lovely Layers Tulips from white cardstock that is 80 pound. I will be working on my Waffle Flower mini stencil mat, and the reason for this is because it's going to kind of hold my die cuts in place while I'm ink blending. I'm using my Honeybee Stamps blending brushes so that I can apply kind of that feathered look so it's going to gradually fade off into white towards the ends or the tips of the tulips. So I started off with the Distress Oxide in Squeeze Lemonade and I'm adding that to all of my pieces. But like I said, I wanted that to fade off into white. Now every now and then I will kind of layer them up to make sure that you can still see the yellow peeking out. If I need to come back in, in and add that, I will. My next color I'm adding is Ripe Persimmon. I don't give this color enough love and I really should because it's gorgeous, especially when it's mixed with the squeezed lemonade. So once again, I'm bringing that up. If I need to, I'll come back in and add that squeezed lemonade because I want to be able to show that transition of color. One thing that's really helpful for me when I am ink blending like this is I will tap off. Once I pick up the ink with my brush, I will kind of tap off. So I'm not coming in too strong or too wet with the ink. And then once I have that in, I'm going to kind of line this up and see what this is looking like. Make sure that I can see that transition from the kind of white tips into the yellow and into that ripe persimmon. Now I'm moving on to kind of a closed bud or a bud that is just starting to open up. So I have these layers die cut as well from the 80 pound white cardstock. That is my preference when I am ink blending with any type of ink, whether it's a dye ink or uh, the distress oxides. This is just my preferred choice. Now again, coming in with that ripe persimmon and bringing that up towards that squeezed lemonade. I love that color you get between the squeezed lemonade and the ripe persimmon. It's such a gorgeous color. Now I can bring this in, kind of line up these layers and make sure I can see all of those colors. And as I was lining this up, I kind of thought it just, it didn't have enough contrast. I just love bold colors and bold transitions. So I decided to bring in candied apple and I'm adding that just to the very bottom or the very edge of the tulips. Now, another color I thought as I was doing this would be crackling campfire, I think would look amazing with this, especially with that ripe persimmon. But for right now, I just have the candied apple. Now that I have that color applied to both of my die cut sets, I squished some of that candied apple down onto my mat, added a little bit of water, Mix that together with my paintbrush and I am going to just flick this all over my die cut pieces. There's just so many things you can do with die cut pieces. I have really fallen in love with using die cuts for my card fronts. Normally it was Copic coloring, but now I am loving this because there's just so many things you can do. I've done a couple of videos that I will link down below that will show you different ways that I've added color to my die cuts. Next, I'm moving on to my leaves and the stems. And once again, this was cut from 80 pound white cardstock. Now they could have been die cut from green cardstock to kind of give me a jump start on my ink blending, but I usually just die cut from white to kind of get an idea. And I thought I already had them die cut. I might as well just go ahead, ink blend and use them. So I started with Twisted Citron and then I added Mowed Lawn. And now I'm coming in and squished down Pine Needles Distress Oxide ink. And I'm going to flick that over this too. Now, just keep in mind, Distress Oxides do react with water. So this really gives it a unique effect. Now I can start working on the assembly. And I will typically work on either scratch paper or some type of other slick surface. You can see I have a Ranger mat down there, or maybe it's a tonic mat. It's just a slick surface, so it catches all of my adhesive. And I layered up my open tulip. That centerpiece I die cut from a matte gold cardstock for a little bit of shine. And then I can finish adding that layer. And I just used Tape Runner to add all of these layers together. 
I'll kind of slow this down for a minute and bring this up a little bit closer so you can see the detail and that ink blending. It was hard for me to see on camera. It looked like it was whiting out. So I just wanted you to be able to see that a little better. Then I can start layering together my leaves and my stems. So that's why I didn't add color all the way as I knew I'd be adding these on top. Now my last piece I'm layering together is kind of that half bloom or that more of a bud. Now I'm just using the tape runner, but you could use liquid glue. You could layer these together with foam squares if you really wanted to add dimension to it. And that is a really nice look. I just didn't want to get too crazy on my card today because I wasn't quite sure the direction I was going to be going. Now that my flowers are all put together, I didn't attach them to the stems yet because I, like I said, I was still kind of in a thought process, but I did go ahead and die cut the spring leaves A2 pierced plate. Little hard to see right now, but you'll be able to see it in just a moment. I started off with ink blending the same colors that I used. So this is ripe persimmon. And I have this sped up quite a bit because this was quite the process for me. I, it, people think ink blending or coming up with backgrounds is really easy for me and it's not always that easy. So I left in quite a bit of the process. I was going to go from a transition that started in one corner and got lighter as it went up and that wasn't what I ended up with and I, you'll see that here in just a moment. So I did the ripe persimmon and then the squeezed lemonade. I needed more intensity because that's how I am. So I brought the candied apple in. And that was okay, but I just wanted more. So now I'm adding Villainous Potion. So I definitely suggest Villainous Potion, the Candied Apple, and either that Ripe Persimmon or Squeeze Lemonade. It is just so beautiful of a color combination. One other thing I wanted to mention is I had actually die cut this originally from a 110 pound cardstock. I was a going to leave it white at first and that's when I decided to ink blend and it's why it's taking me so much work is I like to work with 80 pound this is a heavier cardstock so it's taking me just a little bit more work to blend all these colors together now I decided to go more of a straight down from top to bottom instead of that kitty corner just working through all of those colors once again so this background did take me a little bit of work but I wasn't giving up on it and I love these results now I'm going to take some Perfect Pearls. So I have Perfect Pearls in a gold and also a white that I added to my mat and I just added a couple drops of water and flicked that all over my background. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to stamp my sentiment. And this is from the Small Card Big Hug stamp set. I decided to do white cardstock and stamp it in the Intense Black Ink from Honey Bee Stamps. And I am going to stamp it twice to make sure that I have a really good coverage because I didn't prep my stamp very well beforehand. I'll use the coordinating die to die cut that sentiment out. And for my background, I trimmed it down to four by five and a quarter. And I'm adding a piece of double sided foam that I trimmed down to just slightly smaller than the card panel. And I'm adding that behind there. That's really going to flatten out the entire back there for me. And now I can start working on decorating the front of the card. I'm doing this before I add it to a card base in case I need to trim anything off like those leaves that are overhanging. So I started with my stems and I'm just adding that with the Honeybee Stamps liquid glue and I'm just kind of placing my large flower there right now just to get an idea where it's going to go. And then that bud is going to go just straight to the card front. I'm not adding any foam tape to that one, but I will add foam behind my larger flower since it's going to kind of overlap that butt a little bit. So this one gets to get popped up a little. Then I can go ahead and just remove the backing of those foam squares and add my large flower. Now for the sentiment, I did take that coordinating die and die cut it three more times from white cardstock. And I'm going to layer them together just using a tape runner, but once again, liquid glue would work here as well. Now I wanted this to kind of overlap my leaf there, but I noticed that it was just not quite flush across the front. So I went ahead and die cut two more pieces and I trimmed off the left half of those die cut pieces. So that way when I attach it, the piece that's going to overlap the leaf is going to be flush all the way across because that leaf is popping that front part up or that side part up a little bit. Hope that made sense. Now I can finally attach this to a card front. So I have just a white card base here that is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I remove the backing of that double-sided foam and I can go ahead and attach that now. And I do have my card base kind of closed with a little bit of rolled up a washi tape to keep it shut for me. 
I finished off the card by adding some Modern Springs gems, which are already have adhesive on the back. So I absolutely love how this card worked out. I'm glad I stuck with that background and just kept working it, even though it was using something I'm not used to. So just keep with things, keep working it, and it will come out. I will have all of my supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. And don't forget to check out the next person in the hop. The link will be down below as well and check out all the amazing inspiration. Thanks so much for joining me. Here are a few other videos I think you may enjoy.